All right, guys, so in this example here, we have a piston cylinder assembly filled with water. We have the initial pressure and initial temperature of that water, and it undergoes an internally reversible process to a pressure of 80 PSI in a 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically, we increase the pressure as well as the temperature. And we have a relationship of linear temperature to specific entropy. And then we're going to be looking for the heat transfer as well as the work of the water in BTU per pound, the B per pound mass to be specific. And we can neglect kinetic and potential energy. So I started by making a schematic over here. So here we have the piston up top and it's free floating over this water here. And I have all these specifications for the water listed right over here. Um, and then we're also told again that the kinetic potential kinetic and potential energy are equal to zero. So I'm going to begin this problem by using the first law of thermodynamics, which is just the energy balance equation. And in this case, it's a closed system. So we're going to be using the internal energy equals, or the change in internal energy, I'm sorry, equals the heat transfer minus the work, right? Now, normally this unit here would be a zero. You're probably more used to seeing that, but that's only for open systems. Just keep that in mind and that this is actually a closed system because a piston cylinder assembly and that piston seals the water into the cylinder. Now I'm gonna solve for this heat transfer first. And remember that when you have an internally reversible process that we can find heat transfer by multiplying the temperature by S2 minus S1 or the change in entropy. And because we have two different temperatures here, we can actually just approximate by using the average temperature. So now we'll just find T average. So T average, T average equals 960 degrees Rankin plus 1260 degrees Rankin divided by two. And that's going to yield you with 1110 degrees Rankin. And of course, to get from Fahrenheit to Rankin, all you have to do is add 460 degrees to the 500 and the 12 and the uh, 800 over here. So now with our average temperature, let's look for our specific entropies. So at, for S2, we're going to be looking at 800 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 PSI. We'll turn to our saturated table, table A3. And if you turn to 80 PSI, you have a temperature, a saturation temperature of 312. Again, we were at 800 Fahrenheit, which is way higher than this. So we're in the superheated region. So if I turn to table A4, we have 80 PSI and we have a temperature of 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and therefore we have a specific entropy of 1.87 BTU per pound degree Rankin. So now we just need to find S1 at 500 degrees Fahrenheit and 10 PSI, we'll turn to the saturated table. And at 10 PSI, we have a saturation temperature of 193 Fahrenheit. Again, we were at 500, which is way higher than this. So if we turn to table A4E, we have again 10 PSI and 500 Fahrenheit, and we have a specific entropy, sorry, of 1.969 BTU per pound degree Rankin. So now if you just carry out this expression right over here, you'll see that your degrees Rankin and degrees Rankin will cancel out, and you'll be left that your heat transfer equals negative 109.89, and the unit is BTU per pound mass. So that's your first answer. So to find that work, I'd like to use this expression again. Now that we have our heat transfer, we just need to find that, that internal energy, which we can break down using the specific internal energy, since this work is on a per unit mass basis anyways. So we're going to have that U2 minus U1, and these are both lowercase, equals negative 109.89 BTU per pound mass minus the work, right? And this here is just your heat transfer. So we'll find U2 and U1, both from the superheated tables that we were just at for the entropies. So we'll find U2 first. So to find U2, we will go to uh, table A4E, 800 Fahrenheit in 80 PSI. And we have a specific internal energy of 1292.4 BTU per pound. And now just to find U1, to find U1, we'll be at 500 degrees Fahrenheit in 10 PSI. So again, table A4E for suited properties, and we have a specific internal energy of 1182.2, right over here, 1182.2 BTU per pound. All right, so with these two values filled in, we can just close our bracket, and that's all equal to the heat transfer of negative 109.89 BTU per pound mass minus your work. Now, if you just rearrange and solve for your variable W, you'll find that your work equals negative 220.09 BTU per pound mass. 
Now you may be stuck on wondering like why do you have a negative heat transfer but then the temperature actually increases and keep in mind that in an internally reversible process the heat transfer is actually defined by the change in entropy rather than the change in temperature. So if you introduce heat into the system, so in other words, if you have a positive heat transfer coming into this water, then you'd have an increase in entropy. However, because you had a decrease in entropy, because again, S1, which is 1.969, is greater than S2 of 1.87, that means that heat must leave the system. And furthermore, because you have a negative work here, that means that this water is actually pushing this piston upward, right? Because H2, or uh, sorry, T2 of 800 degrees Fahrenheit has a greater specific volume and therefore a greater overall volume in the system. So that means that this is actually expanding and pushing this piston upward.